Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we'll be taking a look at the recently announced changes for both Frost and Unholy DK. And I will also briefly mention the Death and Decay nerf and what I think about it uh, towards the end of the video. That nerf happened about 2-3 to three weeks ago, if I remember correctly, but it has a pretty significant impact on Unholy gameplay. So first off, as Frost DKs, we are getting Might of the Frozen Wastes passive back. And this was a passive that was in the game back when DKs had the choice between dual wielding or using a two-hander. And it just makes it so your dual wield, um, obliterate and frost strikes do the exact same as they have done since Legion. They will deal damage with your main hand and then hit again with your offhand. And you can also put two rune forges, one on your main hand, one on your offhand. So nothing changed there. And then the other part of it um, affects two-handed frost and it causes your obliterate to deal 25% increased damage and you also have a higher chance of proccing killing machine when you're using a two-handed weapon. So 25% on obliterate damage and slightly higher KM proc might be enough to bring it in line in like an obliteration build for example. I still don't think that two-handed frost will be able to compete with dual wield uh, especially with the Breath of Sindragosa build just because of the sheer fact that losing a weapon enchant is such a huge deal. If you really think about it, you need to choose between losing either your Razor Ice or your Fallen Crusader enchant. Razor Ice is 15% frost damage, and at this point, pretty much all of our abilities do frost damage. The only thing that didn't do frost damage previously was Obliterate, but now they also changed that to do frost damage whenever you get a KM proc. So even that um, works in favor of having double um, Rune Forges. Or the other one that you should that you could lose is Rune of the Fallen Crusader. And that is 15% strength that's up between 50 to 70% of the fight. So having 15% strength up almost constantly, which also synergizes well with our Death's Do ability from the Night Fae Covenant, is such a huge deal. So how do you make the choice between which uh, Rune Forge that you're going to drop in favor of doing a little more damage with Obliterate? The only build that I can see two-handed frost DK being good with is the two-handed obliteration build. But other than that, I honestly don't see too much hope for it. Obviously, this is a good change to bring it a little bit closer to dual wield. Um, but unless obliteration outperforms Breath of Syndragosa, I don't see two-handed frost being too useful anyway. And the other change that was made is to the runic attenuation talent. So I mentioned this in one of my tweets. The issue was that with with uh, dual wielding, you were essentially getting more runic power from runic attenuation than if you were using a two-handed weapon. So what they did was they adjusted the proc rate of RA and they also increased it to give five runic power instead of three. I'm not sure if they lowered the proc rate for dual wield or they increased the proc rate for two-hander, but either way, I don't think this nerf or this change will impact our gameplay too much. Um, as Obliteration, you're most likely not going to be playing Runic Attenuation, so it doesn't matter. So as a two-handed Frost DK, you most likely will not be using the RA talent, you'll be going murder Murderous Efficiency. But if the proc rate stays about the same, then for dual wield, this is a slight buff with Breath of Syndragosa. Now let's look at the changes they made to Unholy. So one of the changes they made is to Soul Reaper. Soul Reaper now costs one rune, it has an eight second cooldown, and it's essentially an execute ability once again. It strikes your enemy for shadow damage and it flicks them with Soul Reaper. After five seconds, if the target is below 35% health, this effect will explode dealing an additional uh, amount of shadow damage to the target. If an enemy dies while afflicted by your Soul Reaper, then you will gain runic corruption. So this is no longer resource generating ability. The only time this will generate resources is if you snipe um, a dying target like you used to try and snipe the little bit of extra haste back in BFA. So Soul Reaper returning as a core rotational ability rather than a you know long uh, resource generating ability I think is overall good. Um, it does make the gameplay feel a little bit choppier than it did but still um, just having a longer cooldown that you just press every 8 seconds, it's a nice little change. 
Overall, I think this change will make Soul Reaper a little bit more of a niche pick um, on encounters where you can execute often and there's ads that are, you know, hit 35% health, so you get the execute bonus. Soul Reaper might still be the go-to, uh, but this brings Harbinger of Doom and Pestilent Postules a little bit closer in line uh, to Soul Reaper as because before there was almost no situations where Pestilent Postules was better and Harbinger of Doom was never played the entire BFA expansion. So overall this change is interesting and we'll have to wait and see how it plays out with some of the different builds that people will come up with. The next change was to Unholy Frenzy. They renamed it to Unholy Strike and they changed the way it works. So it now costs 2 runes to cast instead of no runes. Um, and it's still the same cooldown, 1.3 minutes. So it reads strike your target, dealing shadow damage and inflicting them with 4 festering wounds, sending you into a killing frenzy increasing your haste by 15% for 12 seconds. So here's the issue with this. This is a nerf to Unholy Frenzy. Undeniably this is a complete nerf to the spell as it was in BFA. So it now costs 2 runes to cast it. Uh, this in combination with Soul Reaper that is already three runes that you're using on opener simply to just cast your first three rotational abilities. Then you're only applying four wounds, which in theory sounds nice because you unholy strike, then you instantly apocalypse, so there's no RNG factor. However, you're only applying four wounds. They are up front, so it might feel a little bit better, but Unholy Frenzy applied those wounds throughout its entire duration. Every time you auto attack, it applied a wound. So you did get a little more punished if you had to disengage from the boss during Unholy Frenzy, but if you were able to stick to the boss, you were getting more wounds out of it. Also, the haste amount was nerfed. Unholy Frenzy provided 20% haste for the 12 seconds. This is only 15%. So this overall is a pretty significant nerf to Unholy Frenzy, um, or as it is reworked to Unholy Strike. My fear is that Unholy DK will be significantly rune-starved on opener. Um, I haven't played around with these changes yet, so I'm going to test them out in dungeons and then maybe share some more thoughts about it. But my immediate thought is that with the Soul Reaper change and the Unholy Frenzy change, we might feel a little bit rune-starved on opener because we have Unholy Blight, which is currently the best talent in that row, we have Soul Reaper, we have Unholy Strike, so that is two, three, four runes that you're spending on opener on abilities that are not Festering Strike, not Outbreak, and not Clawing Shadows. So on opener, you're spending basically all your runes. The one good change that they did make was to Army of the Dead. So previously, Army cost three runes, which is why Army of the Dead was always cast before the pull, to give yourself some time to regen those three runes so that when you started the fight you actually had all your runes available. So changing this to be to being a one rune uh, cost makes it so that you can actually cast it during your rotation in your opener rather than having to cast it right before the pull. Um, also if there's any fights where you have to bloodlust at any other point than the pull uh, it makes Unholy or Army of the Dead a little bit more forgiving to cast because previously if there was an encounter where you had to army like towards the end, using three runes like d while doing your normal rotation was pretty punishing and set you back um, and made you be rune starved for quite a while. So having Unholy or so having Army of the Dead only cost one rune overall is a good change. Um, but still I don't like that they didn't address some of the more pressing concerns that people had with Unholy DK, mainly in regard to the, the global cooldowns and the amount of abilities and spells that we actually need to press in our opener. I think out of any of the classes that I play, Unholy DK might have the most abilities that you can press in your opener that are not like repeat abilities. So we have Army of the Dead, uh, that's baseline, then if you talent it, we have Unholy Strike, if you talent it, we have Soul Reaper, if you talent it, we have Unholy Blight, we have Gargoyle, we have Dark Transformation, um, and that is outside of even applying any wounds to your target, 
Um, then we have Apocalypse, so that's seven. And then on top of that, you also need to apply Outbreak to your target. Uh, so Unholy DK just has so many things that we need to press that it would be nice to be able to condense some of them um, by taking them off the global cooldown. And most notably here, I'm talking about Dark Transformation. Soul Reaper, I always advocated to have it off the global cooldown, but since it's reworked into now being a damaging ability, um, it doesn't make sense for you to have it off the global cooldown. So in that case, um, I would like it if they changed Gargoyle to be off the global cooldown. Um, so now let's talk about the Death and Decay nerf. Uh, we, they did announce that the Night Fae ability will be fixed to work with the file. So previously, if you took the file and you were a Night Fae, it simply replaced Death's due, so you didn't have a Covenant ability. Uh, but they are working on fixing that. The other concern with Death and Decay and the file is that you can only hit four targets within your Death and Decay with your Scourge Strike. So at first glance, that doesn't seem like a big issue. Um, I assume you instantly think, I'll just set up on a few different targets, drop my Death and Decay, then start Scourge Striking. And since I have wounds on multiple targets, my Scourge Strike will still pop them, um, and it's not much of a damage difference. Here's the issue. When you have a lot of targets, let's say 10 plus targets, which doesn't happen often, to be fair, but if it does happen, and let's say that out of those 10 targets, three of them or four of them, let's say best case scenario, four of them have wounds, you drop your death and decay and you start skirt striking, there is a chance that the targets which have wounds on them will not be hit by skirt strike. So that is a very, very, very poor design. Imagine setting up 10 wounds across 10 targets, um, but the wounds are consolidated on four different mobs. You drop your death and decay, you spam out five or six skirt strikes, and at the end you still have wounds remaining on some targets because your skirt strike is just hitting random targets. And sometimes you get lucky and all of your wounds get consumed, sometimes you get unlucky and you end up hitting targets that don't have wounds on them. So it makes no sense that Skirt Strike wouldn't have a smart targeting system where Skirt Strike prioritizes targets which have wounds on them. So I'm going to make a post about this on the forums as well, but we need to have some sort of system where your Skirt Strike is selecting targets with wounds on them and prioritizing those to attack within your Death and Decay. And if there's less, or if there's less targets than three or than four which have wounds on them, then you know, it selects the three that have the wounds and then the last one it picks at random. So that's fine. But we can't have a situation where you death and decay, you spam out all your skirt strikes and randomly you still have three, four, five wounds on random targets because there were just too many and you got unlucky. So that's the big change that I hope they do make to death and decay and how they went about actually target capping it. So that was the video on the most recent changes. Overall, I think it's moving in the correct direction. Uh, Frost DK, two-handed, uh, I don't really care about it too much. Unholy, I still think needs a little bit of work, um, but we'll see. There's still tuning happening and they're still making changes. So fingers crossed that they actually listen to the feedback and make the changes that are being asked for. That being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about these changes. What do you wish they changed, uh, buffed, nerfed, or anything like that? And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.